What are their genders and sexualities? Are they canonically dating? How old am I? All these and more will be answered today in this video. Hi, I'm Asher and welcome to my channel. If you think my hoodie is cute, this is actually my merch, so... So go check the link in the description for me to check it out. As a whore... <coughs> As a person that has been creating horror videos for three years... <coughs> God damn. As a person who's been creating horror videos for three years now, I have gotten so many questions and I never really answer them, but that ends today. I asked you guys to send me questions on my Instagram story. I did get thousands, so we're gonna go over a small portion of them today. The first question is from Jen the Destroyer. Does Argos ever hold hands with Mr. Plant, like in a store or when Argos looks for more cool plants? I think they do. I think that, like, Argos is a decently touchy person. I will say that, like, I don't think he's as touchy as people online seem to make him in the art, because Argos and Mr. Plant can't be touchy because I play both of them. <laughs> but I do think that, you know, in, in the universe they do probably hold hands. What is your favorite prop that you made, and where did you get the idea for that character from? It's really hard picking between my masks, but this bunny one is one of my all-time favorites. I actually made it in a Making a Mask With Me tutorial on TikTok, so maybe I need to make another tutorial on here to make another cool mask, because I also made the Mother Fox mask in a tutorial, too. How many voids are there? So I kind of think of that um, philosophy problem where you have the hotel with unlimited rooms and you have unlimited guests, and so you have to force every guest to like move over one to like get the extra space for another guest. I just think that there's kind of like so many voids that they're pretty much unlimited and they're unlimited to the point where Argos, Mr. Plant could live hundreds of years and they will never ever visit all of them. Where are you from and how old are you? I am born and raised in California and I am 23 years old. How long have you been making analog horror content? I think Mark and Friends was the first real analog horror series I did and I started that on July 19th, 2021. So almost two years ago, which is absolutely crazy. <laughs> How do you make things look cool and creepy? I think my biggest advice when it comes to other people making things cool and creepy is just to like make a normal thing and then just have a couple things off about it and that's a really easy way to make something disconcerting. With a lot of my masks I like putting the eyes really close together and really high up because I feel like that's very creepy, but you know, to each their own. How did Mr. Plant and Argos meet? I don't know if I've ever mentioned this like canonically, but I always thought that like their voids were right next to each other and they were neighbors and that's how they met. <laughs> how did you get the idea for Argos and Mr. Plant? By the way, love your characters and videos. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you guys like my characters so much. So Mr. Plant was actually a part of a series I did where I created horror characters based around aesthetics and one of the aesthetics I got was Dreamcore, and Mr. Plant was the character I created from that, and people loved Mr. Plant. They loved him so much that I turned it into a full series. For Argos, I really loved the idea of putting a bunch of sticky eyes all over my face. I knew I wanted a character that was, like, obsessed with Mr. Plant and had that, like, um, I can't think of the word, but that thing about him. Um, <laughs> so I basically created him, and I named him after... Uh, the guy in Greek mythology who has hundreds of eyes all over his body. Although I think in Greek mythology it's Argus and it's Argos in Roman, but yeah, that's how Argos and Mr. Plant came to be. Bound in Wanderlust asks, Any tips on managing all your creative projects? How do you pick which ones to pursue? I actually have a huge problem with this because I just do everything and it absolutely destroys me. I am one of those people who always puts too much on my plate and does way too much work. And so, like, like for a great example is today, where, like, I'm filming this AMA, even though I have to be on a plane in, like, two hours. So, <laughs> but I told myself I need to get this AMA done before I left town so I could edit on the plane, so that's why I'm here doing it. <laughs> What is Mr. Plant's favorite thing about Argos and vice versa? I think Mr. Plant really loves how much of a go-getter Argos is because it's very different than Mr. Plant. Mr. Plant would rather just be at home watching television every day, but Argos has a ton of jobs from being a mail carrier 
to babysitting, to, you know, having the a daycare. So I think Mr. Plant really likes that about Argos. And I think Argos likes Mr. Plant because he likes bad boys. Me and Argos have that in common. Does Argos have a favorite plant he's discovered in one of the voids, other than Mr. Plant? This flower is probably Argos' second favorite flower, um, because it has a bunch of eyes, and he has a bunch of eyes, and I think he'd like that. But I think my personal favorite flower and Argos's favorite flower would definitely be the meat flower. How many pairs of horror contacts do you have? Is it hard taking them in and out? I have seven pairs of horror contacts. I have a red, a black, the white, and then I have a blind white, a blind, like, um, yellow-ish, and I also have a cat eye. I guess that's only six. I also have a purple eye contacts that I sometimes use for horror characters, but those aren't really horror. The red cat eye ones I bought for a specific photo shoot, so you might not see them for a while until I do that photo shoot, but I do have them, and they look very cool, so... I'm excited about that. I wear contacts normally to see, so it's pretty easy for me to take them in and out. How do you feel about the Mr. Plant and Argos fanfics? I like all of them. Even that one that, you know, drummed up a lot of people talking in my comments. I still liked it. I like any fan content. I love that people create fanfiction of my characters in general, and pretty much almost all of it is welcome, including the fanfiction I read that day I did my fanfiction review video. The only type of fan content that I don't really appreciate is weird age gap stuff. Argos and Mr. Plant are both adults. Argos has a lot of adult jobs throughout the series and interacts with actual children, so... That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> How do you make all the costumes for the characters? There's a lot of them, though. There is indeed. <laughs> My entire room is such a mess 24-7 because I just have stacks and stacks of masks, and whenever somebody comes into my room, they're always like, whoa! Like, they always get totally freaked out. I use a lot of, like, long-sleeve, plain shirts for my characters because I feel like they're very basic and then I can build off those and add any extra details or it's just a very basic body of the costume. I also prefer to have a thicker, like, sweater-type material with it just because, like, sometimes with thin shirts you can see the shape of my body and that is not exactly what I, I don't, I don't picture the Void characters having my body, let's just say that. The masks do take a long time to make, some of them can take four hours, and some of them only take an hour, so it's kind of give or take. How do you make your hair look short when it's so long in the first place? Yeah. What advice can you share regarding art and creativity? Art and creativity is not one of those things you can just force out of yourself. In fact, I'm kind of excited to leave town this next week because last time I had a video really, really blow up, it was a concept I came up with while I was out of town when I wasn't even brainstorming. So I think it's really important to take breaks and that's advice that I need to listen to myself. Are they canonically dating? Yes. If you weren't limited by biology, what features would they have? Like any inhuman features? This is such a great question. Sometimes I do use video editing tools to make some of my human characters look a little distorted, especially like have big smiles. I think it would be so cool to be able to like move around my body features and put my eyes a little higher up and closer together. Maybe my mouth like a little bigger. Although in general, this is something I always talk with my little sister about is I'm always like, I wish my mouth was bigger. Um, so yeah, I just think I would love to experiment, maybe make my ears a little bit more out. Stuff like that that just makes me look a little different. It would also be cool to do that so I can play different characters that are human and not just use my facial hair and glasses and pull back hair to distinguish them. What is Argus's sexuality? I mean, is he gay, bi, etc.? He is so sweet. Well, here's the thing. When I created Argos and Mr. Plant, the point was not for them to ever get together. At least in the original first episode, I didn't ever plan for it to happen. I kind of just planned for it to be this sort of unrequited crush from Argos's end. That being said, since conception, Argos has always been gay, or queer, or just like, you know, 
Like, I mean, he's been crazily in love with Mr. Plant since the very first episode, so that's always been the case. So yeah, I mean, they're both queer- they're queer characters. I mean, they're queer characters. Monica or Yuri? Monica. Do you film slash edit these videos by yourself? I do! I do every single step of the process! From the very beginning conceptual stages, to writing the script, to making the props, to filming, to editing, I do all of it. And I play all the characters, except in the rare occasions when I have a friend, like my friend Sabrina, add in an additional female voice. But 9 times out of 10, I'm doing all the voices and the characters and everything. Mr. Plant, is it uncomfortable to be around Argus's plants, or is it a Goofy slash Pluto situation? I do think it's a little bit of a Goofy slash Pluto situation. I also kind of think of each plant as being its own kind of species. Like, think about this, like, we are mammals and so are dogs. And Mr. Plant is a plant and so are Argus's plants. Like, I kind of think about it like that. I also think Argos treats his plants with the same level of respect as he does anyone in the void, so... Yeah. How long does it take to make each video? Anyone behind the camera? As I mentioned before, there is no one behind the camera except me, and it takes a very, very long time. I think the shortest videos will take me two full days of work to get out, and the longest ones can sometimes take a week. Gardening with Argos videos usually only take me two to three days max, but that's a lot longer than a lot of people who make um, content, so I put a lot of effort in my videos. You said Don't Hug Me I'm Scared was an inspiration to the world of Mr. Plant. What else inspired you? Don't Hug Me I'm Scared was a huge inspiration to me. I love the Walton Files. Um, and I also really love the Mandela catalog, and I think just like that general unsettling vibe was definitely something that I thought about when I was originally starting the World of Mr. Plant series. However, the series has now evolved so much that I feel like I can't even say, like, it's, it's just very, very different now. I watch a lot of analog horror, and I think it all kind of inspires me, and I think the analog horror and then also just dream core, that aesthetic, those two things combined are what made the Mr. Plant series. Do you like FNAF? I do. I did do a Michael Afton cosplay, and I might do a William Afton cosplay to celebrate the movie, so let me know if you want to see that, because that would be so much fun. <laughs> Please tell me about your cat. Alright. I woke him up and got him. Alright. Oh, look at the camera! Look at the camera, breakfast! This is breakfast. This is the cat that me and my roommates share together. He used to be uh, one of my friend's cats, but he's kind of crazy and scratchy and attacky, and so me and my roommates decided to take him on. He's absolutely insane, and he loves running across furniture and attacking people, and he does this thing with his arms, like, see this? He loves to play. But I love him, and he's very sweet. And the final question, any regrets about not getting to use Mr. Flower? No, because that plotline was a little stupid. The plan was originally to have, when Argos steals the letter, to basically have Argos and Mr. Plant become friends, and then Mr. Plant to be in Argos's place, and find the letter and explode into a jealous fit of rage, um, and anger that he didn't get the letter from Mr. Flower, who I was kind of considering to be maybe like, you know, a friend of Mr. Plant's that maybe Mr. Plant also had feelings for. And I had originally planned for him to like... Argos, and then it... to end right there, like the whole series. After I did Day in the Life of Argos, I kind of realized that I didn't really want to do this plotline anymore, and you guys didn't really want to see that, and also I kind of had started to get Mr. Plant to warm up to Argos, and I just didn't feel like he could kill him anymore, so I was very happy that that's not how it happened, and I like the character's character development, and Mr. Flower is on his own somewhere, and who knows, like, the letter's just still in Argos' shrine. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope it wasn't insanely long, and it was fun getting to answer all your questions. Thank you so much for watching my videos and continuing to support me, and new Mr. Plant videos and horror videos are coming soon.